what's up guys welcome back or to the channel and yes today we're with the gladiator and we're back in the monkey cave because i thought we would take a quick break from the tj rebuild and do a little bit of a gladiator mod or yeah i guess you can call it a mod but not on my gladiator on sean's <laughs> So it is actually a very, very similar build. I'll go over the build with you guys in just a second. But uh, we're going to be doing today the front axle housing um, upper control arm bushing. So the one that's actually on the housing on the axle side, not on the control arm. Because if you look at the upper control arms on the actual gladiators and the JLs, they don't have a bushing on the arm on that side. They have a bushing on the other side, but that side, the bushing is built into the actual axle. So today we're gonna be replacing that bushing. His is a little bit worn out and he got himself a Johnny joint. So we're gonna go through the process of getting the old one out, putting the new one in and seeing the difference. But let's go and let's do a quick walk around because these are definitely some very similar builds and there's a few things that I can take from his that we might use towards our build. So when you look at both of them, we're sitting on the exact same wheels, or sorry, exact same tires. We both have the Baja Boss all terrains in a 37 flavor, and they are both a 12 and a half by 17. I do have a bit of a different wheel, but they're the same tires. Mine are offset a little bit different, so mine poke a little bit more, but that's just, slight differences now the bumpers you'll see look very similar on both this one is the stock one i just took the end caps off he does have an aftermarket bumper with some super beefy awesome looking uh tow hooks those things definitely mean business he's also got a snorkel just like we have a snorkel but he was brave enough to cut a hole in his hood and do the actual mopar snorkel which i have to say looks awesome that thing definitely gives it a whole nother appearance. Like it makes the truck look a lot meaner, I'd say. He's also got some pod lights on the front. These ones, I believe, are ox beam. Those ones are also ox beam, I think. And yeah, awesome lights. I had some ox beams on the TJ. Never had a complaint with those. But as far as lift goes, he's sitting on a three and a half inch lift in the front and a two inch lift in the rear. I'm sitting on a 1.5 inch leveling spacer in the front. So mine is just a spacer above the coil spring. I am planning to do a 3.5 inch lift all around this year, but this at least gives me an idea of if the Jeep's gonna fit inside the garage here, if my Jeep is gonna actually be able to be parked inside the garage once I lift it. But this gives me confidence that once we do it, we're not gonna have an issue. But enough talking, enough walking around. Let's get under there and let's give him a hand so we can get everything done. As you can see, we've got the wheels off. He's already got the track bar loosened or getting loosened as we speak. And yeah, from there, we're just gonna droop the axle down in a second once we get the sway bar links disconnected. And we're gonna have everything available and easy to us because that's the guy we're changing right there. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but I'll give you guys a better shot in just a second. So we've got the track bar and the sway bar link disconnected on one side. And on the other side, we also have the sway bar link disconnected because the track bar doesn't need to get taken off of the frame. Now we're just gonna do the two upper control arm bolts because there's less pressure on them now. And then we're gonna lower down the axle and give it a little bit of droop so we can actually get to these bushings. So you can see one is here. The other one is right on top of the diff housing. It's a little bit hard to see from here, but we'll get to that side but this is basically what we're replacing. We're gonna have to push this bushing out and replace it with a new one because that's what's worn out. As you can see, what I was talking about is the control arms don't have the bushings. It's the axle housing that houses the bushings, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is, so uh, we gotta deal with it. Uh, still a little bind, so we'll have to Hold drink on. it a little bit. Do you want, maybe I can pry it? Yeah, it's pushed up towards the front, so. Okay, yeah, uh, no, I, got a, I won't get in there. I got an actual pry bar. I won't get in there like that, but. Yeah, buddy, that's what I'm talking about. And now you can see the other side, which I was talking about. It's right on top of the axle housing, basically. So, uh, yeah, let's take this one apart and get her all done. Yep. Oh yeah, I should come. Easier than the other side. 
One other difference with Sean's Gladiator over mine, if you're wondering, is he is re-geared. So he's running 513 gears in the front and the rear. And yeah, so far so good. He's had very good things to say about it. I've been leaning towards getting 487s, but to be honest, I might get the 513s now. We'll see. First, we got to get our lift on. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but uh, yeah, if you guys are wondering why he's got the different um, diff covers, that's why. <laughs> that was a great shot. I said, <laughs> let's go get the camera before it comes out, and it came right at you guys. So there is the stock bushing. You can see she's flared out at the edge, probably about 3 eighths of an inch, which holds it in. The rest is tapered down. So you only really have to knock it out that 3 eighths of an inch. And you know what? It's a damn good thing we started knocking it the way we did because it wouldn't have come out the other way if we tried. So it's, <laughs> we guessed, we really did. We said, let's go this way. And if we went the other way, well, <laughs> I wouldn't be breathing this hard. I'd be breathing a lot harder, let's say that. <laughs> but no, that took about a good 10 minutes of us going back and forth with the hammer and she's out. So we tried using this to take it off, but we couldn't get it in there because of the distance that we needed for the punch. And now to get it back in, it should work. So let's see. Oh yeah, let me get a let me get you guys a better shot because it's working beautifully. That's all right, we'll reseat it. Yeah. But uh, as you guys can see, it was going very nice. We'll just reseat it. Yeah. And this is a shot of the newer one. So it is a Johnny joint. So it's a ball joint inside there and it is rebuildable. But first, before we think about that, let's get it all set back up. Yeah, it's walking. Well, thanks to the ball joint press, we got it all seated and pushed in exactly how it should be. Now, we're gonna move on to the other side. And to be honest with you, I was mistaken. The other side isn't already coming out of the housing. The other side, the housing is only that big. So that side obviously has to stick out. So that's how that one sits and that's how that one seats. But it was a heck of a lot easier to get it on with the ball joint press than smashing it on with a hammer. When you do that hammer style, <laughs> When you do hammer time, you got to take out the, the shocks and the springs because well, where are you going to swing your hammer? So the ball joint press definitely helped us out on that front. And now we're going to move on to the driver's side, get that one out and push the new one in. However, we do need to wait to bolt these back up. As you can see, they don't line up perfectly because the axle still drooped. So we need to bring the axle back up. So once we're done, we'll bolt them up. But that's it. And if you're wondering why they were walking or why it took us so many resets, it's because the Johnny joint, once it's vibrating, all the pressure you're putting on the actual housing here, it's also pushing on around here. And once this tweaks enough and goes to the very end of its limit, then you're pushing on the Johnny joint. Instead of pushing this in, you're pushing that down. So you gotta reset and get everything lined back up and kind of push it the right way. This is basically what we're using to get it on there. And you can see this has a perfect seat so that you're not stressing the Johnny joint. But once the Johnny joint starts to go down and crooked, then you're actually stressing it. So just reset it a couple times if you guys are doing this job yourselves and should be good. That's it. This side came out a lot easier because as you can see, this side is a lot thinner. And Sean manhandled that himself in about two minutes. The uh, the crush sleeve isn't centered anymore because the rubber is all the, yeah, distorted you inside. Yeah, you can see that there. That's crazy. So there's the new one. And, well, let me turn on some lights for you guys. There's the new one. And you can see she went in a lot easier than the other side because of how deep the housing is. But so far, so good. Now we've got them both seated. Only thing left to do is to bolt the back in and we should be ready to rock. And one other mod that I'm actually gonna be doing on my Jeep very soon is this. This is the stabilizer relocation bracket. So the steering stabilizer originally mounts up right over here, but obviously on the other side. So it would mount up here and go to your axle. So it sits pretty low. 
and I can show you those two holes oh, right over here. I just don't want to get in Sean's way, but there's the two holes right there. So your steering stabilizer originally mounts here and goes underneath. Problem with that being is I've already hit mine off rocks and they're not too cheap. So there's two styles of relocation bracket. First style is that bracket over there that's on the actual tie rod. This bracket right here, which connects to your track bar. There's basically an elongated bolt, which this is not it, but basically what happens is you have a bolt that is a double-ended bolt. So it's threaded on both sides and you'll be able to put it into your track bar and then you'll also be able to put it back into your... Oh, there it is. So this is the bolt. So it goes into your track bar and then on this side, it's also threaded on the inside right there. It's a little hard to see, but basically this side would connect to your steering stabilizer. So you would have this as a double use bolt. Instead of that, we're going back to a standard bolt on the steering stabilizer and we're getting that bracket to move it up and out of the way. So it gives you an even bigger lift than having it where the, where the track bar is. And it gives you the peace of mind that it's not gonna be touching the uh, uh, tie rod. Sorry, I don't know why I had a brain fart there. <laughs> but basically right now the issue is that when you relocate it from the tie rod to the track bar, it does rub the tie, uh, the tie rod a little bit. Now we're hoping to eliminate that. And yeah, this is a rock jock product. If you guys were wondering, they do make these brackets for relocating your steering stabilizer. If you guys want, check them out. I'm not sponsored, but definitely they make some good products. I do run their steering on, the, on my TJ, and I'll tell you guys, I broke both upper control arm mounts off of the axle, rolled the axle, and the steering to this day has still not been replaced because it's still tight. <laughs> so that's a testament to their products. They really work and cool. they hold up. So the fun thing is whenever you do a Jeep mod, you usually have to do another mod to make that mod work. <laughs> Case in point, the sway bar links that came with the lift didn't want to fit between the sway bar bracket because this one has a bracket on each side. So Sean had to remove that bracket. But now that he's going to this sway bar spacer, uh, sorry, steering stabilizer spacer, uh, it's causing that bracket not being there to have it not line up. So. <laughs> It's always chasing something, it's always fixing something, but we got it fixed with a few washers and we got it spaced back out because it has to line up with the track bar so that it can sit properly and then you can put your steering stabilizer on top. And now that everything's been torqued, we're just putting the steering stabilizer back on or Sean is putting his steering stabilizer back on. We got all of the bolts in and these are actually really nifty. I've never seen a bolt like this before. So it's got a Zerk fitting on the bolt. So you put your grease gun on this end and it shoots grease into the Johnny joint and greases the joint from this side, which is really cool. I've never seen anything like that before. And yeah, we'll see how it holds up and how it works. But uh, in theory, it should be pretty good. Now you can see this is how the steering stabilizer is gonna sit. So we've got the track bar bolted in. We've got the bracket bolted in by the track bar as well as the sway bar link. And steering stabilizer will now connect to our drag link, or tie rod I should say, sorry. And that's it. Bingo bango, it's out of the way. Instead of it being, being low hanging fruit at the bottom over here where you can smash it off of rocks and all kinds of other junk, now we have it up and out of the way where hopefully it will not get in the way of wheeling. Now they're all greased and ready to go. We've got the wheels back on. Everything is tight. Only thing left is to adjust the steering stabilizer for the distance because he had to change the uh, the track bar location. We had to move the track bar over a little bit to center the axle. Not for anything that we did today, that was just a side project. So we centered the axle and now because we put the new steering stabilizer bracket, we just have to center up the steering stabilizer and make sure it sits where it's supposed to. Nice thing about this kit, or not this kit, this drag link, it comes with a, a high steer bushing. What do you mean? Or a high, high steer sleeve. So I could dr uh, drill out the, t the knuckle yeah. and flip it. So my drag link would be on top. Well, what do you mean? You flip the knuckle? No, you flip this on you top flip of the knuckle. this on top of the knuckle. Yeah, yeah, yeah you basically yeah. drill it out to seven eighths, yeah. drop in the sleeve because that gives you a taper. Oh. And then all you have to do is get a uh, track bar bracket to lift it up. Because oh. they have to be in line so you don't get bump steer. 
So then you need a track bar bracket after too. Yeah. Ah. And there you guys have the new location for the steering stabilizer. So you can see it's tucked way up out of the way. It used to live right down here in this section. Now it's tucked up nice and neatly so that it's not gonna get hit by any rocks, hopefully. But uh, yeah, it's nice to actually get it out and not have to worry that you're gonna destroy it every single time. Cause I know a lot of people that go through these things uh, pretty often. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna pick up this bracket for myself and throw one on my gladiator. But I'm also happy that we got those bushings in and that we did it the easy way with the ball joint press so that when I have to do it on mine I'm not gonna have an issue and Hopefully we don't have to do it too soon But uh, I do think that once we do our lift I'm gonna be looking at doing something like that because as Sean was mentioning Those are the only thing that's gonna start binding once you actually have your lift on because the amount of flex in those bushings Compared to all the other bushings that come with a lift or with upgraded control arms. They don't add up <laughs> So that is gonna be your weak point and your limiting factor So if you guys have a lift on your Jeep or JL or Gladiator then definitely check your bushings take a look at them and see how they're how they're looking because i've checked mine i don't have any issues with mine just yet you can see mine are in there a little bit hard to see but they're in there so far i don't have any issues with mine but the way that sean was describing it is you get sort of like a floaty feeling it's almost like like if uh when people say it drives like a boat, that's what they mean. It kind of floats and it doesn't have that direct steering feel. So that's basically what he was experiencing. And hopefully with this, well, I know with this, it's gonna make a big difference, but hopefully he's gonna notice a big difference driving home and it's actually gonna improve the issue that he was describing. So let's go for a quick drive, see how it goes. But so far, just driving it out of the garage, Sean's already saying that he feels the steering's a little bit tighter. So that's a good thing. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Go left. So does it still have that boaty feel? Like is it floaty? No. Before I hit the bumps and it feel like felt like my shocks were gone. Yeah. Before, but now it's it's solid. Sweet. Yeah, and because we adjusted the the axle, the track bar, the steering is a little bit off. We did readjust the steering, but it just needs a just a hair, a little bit more. And like I was just saying, whenever you adjust your steering in these Jeeps, or any Jeep, there's always a little bit of a slack spot. So wherever you have that dead spot, when you're adjusting your steering, when you start moving and once you actually get it going, then you'll find that that slack spot sometimes is just where you, where you didn't want it and now you're just a hair off. So we'll have to readjust it just a little bit, but that usually happens. You usually have to go through one or two adjustments. To get it right on the very first time, I think I've done it once in four years, so yeah. <laughs> Looks like we did our job well. Everything is tight, everything is good to go. So we'll keep testing it, take it for a little bit more of a drive, but uh, looks like everything is improved from where we started. And with that, I think we're gonna wrap it up, guys. The Jeep is done, she's all buttoned up. She drives better, everything is tight. So hopefully it'll last for a bit and hopefully we don't have to do ours too soon, but I think I might do it at the same time as the lift, just so that I get it out of the way and I don't have to worry about having it on the back burner and I'm always thinking, oh, I'm gonna have to replace that part. So it's a good thing that we did this today because it gives me the information and the knowledge that I could put towards my build. So awesome. And honestly, it was a great day. It was an easy day. It went a lot better than I thought. It could have been a lot harder if we had to take the springs out and had to deal with all of that. But luckily I had the ball joint press and we managed to do it. So good for us <laughs> but at the end of the day i'm happy that we got it done for him and that he has it all fixed up and that it should drive better so if you guys are new around here please jump down there hit that subscribe button hit that like button give this video a like hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did then hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next one but until then guys ride safe out there peace